Let's Solve Only Murders in the Building, part of the Cinda Canning Podcast Network. Be sure to subscribe to all our hit shows, like All It's Not Okay in Oklahoma, The Yard Dogs, and Daddy's Little Helper. Sin Sin is the best. Hey guys, we're going to be breaking down episode 5 twist today. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on our hunt to learn who killed Tim Kono. At, what, and let's not forget who killed Zoe Cassidy, it, wait, as well as who killed Evelyn the cat, and who poisoned Winnie the dog. And now, who is Angel, the black market jewelry dealer? Let's not assume all the answers lead to one single person, just as we shouldn't assume Lucian and Vaughn are the greatest podcast host ever. As Cinda said herself, there certainly could be only murderers in the building. I'm sure you guys have heard only murders in the building has been renewed for season two. Quote, everyone in our amazing building worked with such love and expertise through extraordinary times with incredible support from Disney, Hulu, and 20th Century TV to create a first season that might live up to our legendary cast, our beloved New York City, and to make a show about connection said series co-creator and executive producer John Hoffman, to feel we've connected with our audience and hit the mark enough already to have a chance to continue and to carry on our show's wild ride of mystery, comedy, empathy. It's too exciting for words. I'll shut up now and just say a huge thanks to all, and I can't wait for more. 20th Television President Kerry Burke said, The comedy this team delivered has been the obsession of every executive at this studio and our friends at Hulu have treated it like the crown jewel that it is. And now, thanks to the incredible audience response, we are happy to say there will be more murders in the building, which is great news for everyone except perhaps the residents of the Arconia. Now, executive producer Hoffman also pointed out at the end of episode four, we're saying it with a little bit of a tease, and that is Cinda's monologue at the end of episode four points a little bit to the potential for season two. Hoffman also pointed out, within our gorgeous opening credits, which we worked on very hard, there is a slight difference, an Easter egg drop basically, a slight thing to pick up and find in each episode's opening credits that points to a little mystery within that episode or within the mystery at large. Holy smokes, guys, this is crazy. We're going to have to start Credit Watch now. Spoilers for the first five episodes. If you haven't seen the first five episodes of Only Murders in the Building, then you shouldn't hop into a stranger's car and pick up a cactus. We're at the halfway point, and in honor of this episode's title, Twist, we're going to twist up our podcast a bit, and we're going to run down every suspect that we've highlighted so far. And we're going to give a quick look to see if they should stay on the suspect list or leave the list. I haven't mentioned this, but I've read Steve Martin's autobiography, Born Standing Up. I've also read Martin Short's autobiography, I must say, My Life as a Humble Comedy Legend. Okay, Selena Gomez, time to put out a book. We are part of the Double P Podcast family. If you're listening to this podcast version, know that in our YouTube version, we're putting up screen grabs of all the visual clues that listeners need to know. And if you're watching this on YouTube, Know that we have an audio-only podcast available on every major platform, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. Just search Double P Podcast, subscribe, leave a written review. It helps other detectives discover our evidence. And if you're on YouTube, remember to tickle that like button. Just this week, we started up our podcast focused on FX's adaptation of the graphic novel Why the Last Man. For information on everything we do, Twitter and Instagram at Double PHQ. That's the word double, the single letter P, the letters HQ for headquarters, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. Before we get into the clues, we like to give out our last laugh award. This is an award we give to the most hilarious moment in each episode. This week, we're going with Oliver's heartfelt message to Charles about trust and needing a second take. A comment on YouTube got us thinking. We often asked, who do you think killed Tim Kono? Another option might be, who do you want to have killed Tim Kono? Maybe you want the killer to be Charles and to give the entire show a darker tone to contrast all the whimsy. Or maybe you don't want the killer to be Charles, Mabel, or Oliver. That way the three podcasters can stay together and have hijinks again in season two. I want to play myself in season two. 
especially after I got this feedback on YouTube from Jan, who wrote, Try to make your voice seem livelier, or add a bit of background music. This video sounds too dry. These pretzels are making me thirsty. Thanks, Jan. I'll try to liven it up. I always say before we run down the suspects, let's look at what episode 5 taught us about the victim, Tim Kono. I do have to point out, Tim could be, aka the killer. He could have committed suicide. He could have poisoned those cats. He could have pushed Zoe off the roof. This week, we learned Tim was supposedly looking for a black market jewelry dealer named Angel. Why do you think he was doing this? To pawn the jewelry Zoe was selling? What do you think it was? We had some great feedback on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash double PHQ, from Stacy, who wrote, I have a theory. The show is happening in January, and Tim's bad asthma, quote, ruined Christmas. You add that with Howard saying that Tim was always upset about something, but it had gotten worse lately. Stacy says, Tim didn't have asthma. He needed the chimneys open for some reason. And that reason may be the key to Oscar getting out from wherever he's been. Plus, it could also be about Mabel's return to the Arconia from where she disappeared for 10 years. Stacy also writes, the sex toys Oliver located in Tim Kono's apartment looked an awful lot like a cat toy. We don't know what happened to Barbara the cat. We also don't know how Evelyn died, although it seems likely that Evelyn was poisoned. Big picture, Stacy writes, the real Hardy Boys are Charles and Oliver and Mabel. Mabel really does make packs wherever she goes. Zoe is such a key to this mystery. The ring Zoe stole and wore to the New Year's Eve party is going to play a big part in the show going forward. As we run down the suspects, let's imagine how the ring could play a part in the crimes. One big theory going around online was submitted by Malik, who said, Do we think the picture that was covered by Sting's picture on the suspect board is a red herring? Okay, so let's talk about this. Some people online think in that episode where we first saw the suspect board, episode 3, Oliver was like, you think musical icon Sting is a suspect? Charles said, I'm just a fan, and then moved the picture of Sting to the corner of the suspect board, covering up another photo. People think, ooh, what if that photo he covered up showed the real killer? And I think this is a fun way it could be done. Uh, we just personally don't believe it. The picture is of a guy with a beard. If you squint, you can see this bearded man as a background actor in the scene in the lobby for Tim Kono's memorial. But if you're just going to pick a random background person, how about this guy from Tim Kono's memorial? He also appears in a bunch of scenes. Here he is in an elevator scene with some of our characters. Malik, I don't buy this person as a suspect, but great eagle eyes do look for clues like that. On last week's podcast, we asked, is Oliver's son Will a suspect? Should he be a suspect? We got a bunch of feedback on this. Our friend in Germany wrote, I don't think Will should be included. He just seems to be there to inform the viewer of certain things. While Sam wrote, in the first episode, Oliver mentioned that he has lived in the building for years. So therefore, Will was probably raised in the building. If he isn't seven years older than the Hardy Boys and is rather like three to four years older, he might have been aware of the gang back then. What if Will was the one arguing with Zoe on the night she died? Maybe Tim is dead now because Mabel is back in the picture and Will feared that Tim might tell her of his involvement, especially since Oscar was just being released. Maria also wrote, Let's assume Tim was gay. He could have been in love with Will. He also could have given Will the jewelry so that he could sell them to afford to go to college. He also knew his dad leaves his apartment door unlocked, probably allowing him to poison Winnie the dog. Maybe Tim was heartbroken after all this time and Will got married to a woman and had a family. We love theories. We love theories. Oliver's son, Will, at this point, let's keep him on the suspect board. Sting. Okay. Sting's got to be removed. Arnov, I don't know if there's enough evidence of any way Arnov could be connected to the case. For now, we'll remove Arnov from the suspect list. Charles' flirt buddy Jan. Taylor wrote this feedback where she said, I don't think Jan could have delivered the note to Charles as quickly as she did. Taylor's writing of the scene where Jan and Charles were playing their instruments over the courtyard of the Arconia. Jan disappeared, and suddenly a note appeared under Charles' door. Following up on Taylor's theory, Lisa wrote, Maybe someone else slipped them both notes 
So each thought the other had asked them for a date. Oh, matchmaker theory. I love it. Jan, we're going to keep on the suspect list. Let's go back to the ring Zoe stole. It had to have been somebody's. Could it have been Jan? Jan is also on that sixth floor, the floor that Tim Kono entered the elevator from in episode one, in that brief moment before he was dead. Teddy Demas, Nathan Lane's character, we're going to leave on the suspect list. Teddy also lives on the sixth floor, and if we're focused on Zoe's ring, hey, he must have had a mother to his son Theo. Did she have a ring? Teddy, right now, we'll leave him on the list. Why would Teddy finance a podcast looking into the murder? It doesn't make too much sense. But the show itself addressed that possibility in this fifth episode. So, Teddy, you stay on the list. Teddy's son, Theo, has to stay on the list. Theo, if you know anything about murder mysteries, is going to become the focus very quickly of a possible suspect. The way Theo was introduced, he's just so brimming with, why is this character here? Why does Theo the son exist? The very first shot, it's a shot of him setting up that food from Demas Deli at Tim Kono's memorial in the lobby. What is Theo there for? Many of the other apartment residents, you could see, hey, they're there for comic relief. Theo, not only did we have that setup shot of him, while Oliver's talking, we see Theo doing sign language to Bunny over Oliver's shoulder. When Bunny leaves, Theo actually kind of turns towards the camera, aka turns towards our three podcasters, aka maybe possibly looking at Mabel in the process. We have no idea where Theo's mother is, a woman who might have owned a ring like the kind Zoe took. Theo is staying on the list. Uma Heller, the bird lady. It really seems she's just here for comic relief and to shoot people the bird. Ursula. Ursula's a tricky one. She does run a lot of scams. She does get the mail. Tim Kono was looking for his mail. Who's the person who might have been grabbing these things before? Ursula. Again, maybe not so much a suspect at this moment. Ursula, what do you guys think? Should Ursula stay on the list, yes or no? How about Bunny? We got this great feedback from Packaday Productions, who wrote, My theory, Bunny did it. Bunny is the on-site housing board leader and the on-site building manager. Both people that have been attacked so far were behind in their building payments. And she is looking to clean house. Oh, I love great theories like that. A.K.A. Tim Kona was behind in his building payments. Oliver was, and so his dog was poisoned. Love that theory, Packaday Productions. Bunny, what do you think? She's also the type of person who might have owned a ring like we saw stolen from Zoe and worn on the New Year's Eve. Might she have gone to the New Year's Eve party complaining about the noise and then seen Zoe wearing that ring? Okay, I'll go with it. Bunny stays on the suspect list. Howard Morris has not had a spotlight in a while, but his cats are still front and center in this mystery. Personally, I think Howard should stay on the suspect list. Amy? We really barely know anything of Amy. How about Dr. Grover Stanley? Again, nothing so much yet. Miss Adoko? We know she lived next to Tim. We know she wanted his apartment. She might have had a ring like Zoe's stolen ring. I'm going to need more to keep her on the suspect list. How about Jose Torres? Thea wrote in and said, I honestly think Oscar's father killed Tim Kono and Zoe. We also got a hint of an unseen character so far. Oscar's older brother, Jose's other son. Hmm, have we met this person yet? A character who was introduced this week is Tavo, Mora's cousin. All we know so far about Tavo is that he's from Long Island. And he's a tattoo artist. I don't think Tavo makes the cut. Let's jump to our four big suspects. Oscar, a.k.a. Tie-Dye Guy, a.k.a. The Hoodie Man. Let's talk about what we learned about Oscar this week. He's been out of prison a week. When Mabel said, why haven't you contacted me? Oscar says, well, I had a whole plan. Hmm, a whole plan? Hmm. Oscar claims the day he got out of prison is the night Tim Kono killed himself. Once again, Oscar has this a mysterious older brother. Is it someone we know? Oscar has a whale tattoo. He's flirting heavily with Mabel, even though his girlfriend, Zoe, died and sent him to prison. Is he just a natural flirt? Are you a natural flirt if you've been in the big house for 10 years? Oscar also refers to Tim as an a-hole. Hmm. Now, what do you guys think? Should Oscar be a suspect? 
because he said he just heard a gunshot and ran. And then the show visually shows us him hearing the gunshot and running. Is this a bit of trickery where what we saw, the show is trying to trick us on what we saw? I don't know. We'll keep Oscar on the suspect list, but I gotta be honest, I'm not sure it's him. Let's go to the big three. Oliver's up first. If you look in Oliver's old car, Aphrodite, in the ashtray, there's a drug there, a fen-fen. That might be the type of drug that Zoe would have liked to steal from people's apartments 10 years ago. Another thing we've never talked about is on the night of the fire alarm and Tim Kono's death, we see a shot of Oliver putting his dog Winnie into a cart with wheels. But how in the world did Oliver go down all those stairs with Winnie in a cart with wheels on it? Hmm. As Charles pointed out in the episode, it was Oliver who kept saying to forget about tie-dye guy. Oliver has a car that he doesn't drive, he claims his license is expired, yet Oliver is paying all that money for a parking spot? That's got to be a huge expense. And he's been begging for money? What is going on with Oliver? Hmm. In an odd bit of Disney Plus TV shows combining, Oliver's car has the dancing Hawaiian lady figure on it, which was seen at the beginning of this week's episode of Why the Last Man. We know he was in Los Angeles. Finally, about Oliver, he didn't seem to remember Zoe's death until his son Will reminded him. But as soon as Will reminded him in front of somebody else, he claims that it's odd that Charles doesn't remember. Oliver has an ex-wife who might have had a ring like Zoe stole. Oliver stays on the suspect list. Let's go to Charles. And Charles keeps having scenes that make you wonder what is going on. I think the very first thing in this fifth episode that's a bit bizarre is Lester the doorman runs up and says, Hey Charles, is this your hat? When did Charles lose his hat? Does anybody remember that? I'm a bit confused. We may have to go to Hat Watch now. Is this supposed to be Lester the doorman as a suspect? Where did that hat go? Somebody write in the comments. Write us on Facebook, facebook.com, at double PHQ. Twitter and Instagram, at double PHQ. When did Charles lose this hat? I believe the last time we saw Charles's hat, he was up on the roof right when he discovered the ring. But somebody checked me on those facts. Also, is Bunny wearing it during the imaginary theater lineup? Is Oliver wearing it during the imaginary theater lineup? Charles claims he can't remember Zoe's death because back in 2010, he was on prednisone. I hope I pronounced that right. Medicine, which plays with his memory. Did Zoe steal that prescription medication? He also claims it's the first time he's been out of Manhattan in five years. But Charles claims he has a sister who lives in a village on Long Island, New York. He hasn't been there in five years, but he has a sister and a bunch of nieces. This really feels like another Brazo story, doesn't it? With his story about Emma and Lucy, those are two possible characters who could have owned the ring that Zoe stole and wore to the New Year's Eve party where she met her dark fate. We had great feedback on Twitter about Charles being the killer. This from Sean Gregan at HeyRef on Twitter. He wrote to our Twitter handle at Double PHQ and wrote, I'm leaning towards Charles. I think it would be neat by the writers if the reason why he put himself in all of the photos on the suspect board was because Charles is signposting it's him. He's the killer. And Sean, we love, love, love that reasoning. You keep looking at the suspect board. Who's the biggest face you keep seeing there? Charles. Oh, that is really good. Maria gave us this bit of feedback where she said, Oliver kept asking Charles, how come he doesn't know anybody's name in the building? How long have all of them been living in this building? How come they forgot about Mabel being there as a young kid? Maria also writes, what if Charles's daughter Lucy is the girl Oscar was cheating on Zoe with? And Charles had to protect her when Zoe was fighting with her that night. Oh, great theories, guys. We are going to solve this Oh, I can't believe it. This is wonderful. Let's go to our final suspect, the Triple M, Mistletoe Mabel Mora. Oh, here we go. Mabel asks Oscar, why didn't she see you as tie-dye guy on the stairs? But is it a clue that Mabel wasn't on the stairs during the fire alarm? That's why she didn't see tie-dye guy on the stairs? For some reason, Charles doesn't remember that Mabel was also pushing back against tie-dye guy, saying that, they couldn't suspect some guy just for wearing a hoodie. She also said, enough with tie-dye guy. It's just a waste of time. 
Mabel's cousin Tavo, a.k.a. Gustavo Mora, has a tattoo shop on Shore Boulevard, and Mabel isn't able to put two and two together? How in the world did she miss that? And here is a great clue that Gloria gave us on YouTube. Gloria wrote, Mabel used the ALS sign no to Oliver. What is her relationship to Theodemus? Gloria asked. Okay, so yeah, let's look at this again. When Oliver was trying to give Charles points about, hey, tell Jan that her purse looks great, Mabel did use the sign for no, it appears to be, in that scene. So if Mabel knows ALS, does that give her a connection to Theodemus, who's deaf and knows sign language? Oh, boy, this is some great stuff. Who do you suspect is the killer? We keep asking, we keep begging for your feedback on Facebook, facebook.com slash double PHQ, Twitter and Instagram at double PHQ. Leave a YouTube comment, tickle that like button and give us that big thumbs up because we're going to do it. We're going to solve who killed Tim Kono. Here's more feedback we got. Adventure Girl wrote, I'm just obsessed about this show. We are too, Adventure Girl. Lisa wrote, I can't stop thinking about this show, and I'm so glad you're doing the follow-up. I hadn't noticed how eerily similar the handwriting was in the card from Lucy and the note left on Oliver's door until you pointed that out. I wonder if Charles wrote the card from Lucy. It's not little girl handwriting. Lisa continues and says, I'm beginning to wonder if Emma, Charles's ex, who he claims to have had a six-year relationship with, and the daughter Lucy, didn't really just disappear. Did Charles murder them? Hmm. But of course, neighbor Arvid said his daughter FaceTime with Lucy. Questions, questions, Lisa wrote. Gloria also noted, We like your videos, research, and comments. You know the pork pie hat that Steve Martin wears is Charles, aka the one Lester the doorman said, Hey, is this yours? It's a tip of the hat to Buster Keaton, who also wore a similar hat as an amateur detective in the 1924 silent movie Sherlock Jr. Oh, of course, Gloria, great point. Even though if I do have to say on the down low, I'm more of a Chaplin fan or even Harold Lloyd. Listeners, if you haven't gone back and watched those silent comedies from the 1920s, they still hold up. They're pretty funny. Jazzler wrote, Episode 4 really made me throw out the whole Zoe and Lucy are the same person theory. But maybe Charles is lying. Jazzler, we love great theories. R.I.H. wrote, I'm positive Tim Kono will end up being good. I have the feeling that we're supposed to believe Mabel had a crush on him, but it was the opposite. Tim seemed hurt in that flashback in episode two, where she appeared only to ask him about that night. I also got weird vibes from Mabel and Zoe. Maybe Mabel had a crush on Zoe instead of Tim. I don't know how any of this fits in what happened, though, but I'm sure Tim ultimately lied to protect Mabel. Oh, love it. Winda wrote, I think Tim was not really dead, and this whole murder is set up by Tim for Mabel to solve, because she loves solving mysteries. Okay, Winda, boy, we love these. Christian wrote, I think Oscar is the next victim. He is probably the dead guy we see in the flash forward at the beginning of episode one when Mabel said, I can explain it. My best guess is someone who loves Zoe is the murderer, or maybe Zoe isn't dead at all. She survived somehow, and someone used a lookalike as a dead body, and she's the killer. Man, these great crazy theories. I love it. Mac wrote, I hope we get more scenes between Mabel and Tim. I want to know more about their friendship and their dynamic. They've been friends for years. Well, of course, there was that 10 years that Mabel disappeared. Mac continues, it seems Tim was not the best person based on how many people just disliked him. I wonder why Mabel liked hanging out with him. She seems to be the only person who actually cared about Tim Kono. Could their relationship have been something more? Well, this is a great point, Mac, and Mabel does seem to rebuff Oscar's flirting. Dermot wrote, in episode one, we see Charles and Oliver both arrive at the diner at around the same time, but Mabel shows up a little later. Where was she during the evacuation? Mm. Finally, we have Stephanie, who wrote my theory. I think the person who killed Zoe is the ring's owner. In the New Year's Eve flashback, Zoe is wearing a huge ring she stole from someone in the Arconia. When Zoe is fighting with Oscar, when her body is laying on the ground, the ring is missing. I believe that the ring owner caught her and confronted her at the party. Perhaps the owner killed Zoe on purpose out of anger or by accident. 
They could have been fighting, trying to get the ring, and maybe Zoe accidentally fell off the roof. I don't know how Oscar and Tim play into the theory, but screen grabs do show the fact that Zoe enters the party with the ring and leaves without it. Yes, that ring is so important. Guys, that's it for episode five. We're going to be back in a bit with our look at clues of episode six. We need your help. I can feel it. These theories are so great. Your notes are so great. Guys, let's dive in. Let's solve Only Murders in the Building. See you next week.